Joining me now, criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Troy Slayton and Omar Nuraldeen, vice president of the Muslim Public Affairs Council. Thank you both. A, a lot to get into there. Troy, I want to go to you first and, and was an AG who was being very, we'll say he was being diplomatic, even though he, he's not a diplomat, being quite magnanimous about what the ruling means. At its heart, though, in terms of the states themselves and what they hope to get out of objecting to this travel ban, is it not game over for them? And if not, why not? Well, it's not game over for them. The court tossed them a little bit of a bone, although the White House can claim victory because several parts of the president's executive order that uh, up till now have not been able to be enforced can now go into full force and effect. The administration can now block uh, people from those six majority Muslim nations who have no bona fide connections to the United States, but uh, to Hawaii, and the case from the Fourth Circuit as well, um, they, they won a little bit by being able to have those persons who do have connections to the United States, people from the University of Hawaii and that doctor and others uh, can make legitimate applications to come in and the United States can't just block them um, by you know, whole cloth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I wanna go now uh, to the president and the words that he used during the campaign a lot of the states and a lot of the people advocating against this ban thought those used would those words would be used to get against him in this case let's have a listen donald j trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of muslims entering the united states i think islam hates us we are not exactly loved by many muslims you know, Omar, it's interesting that while he didn't continue that as president, he did continue this line that it was a travel ban, even when his own spokespeople said, don't call it a travel ban, it's not a travel ban. He put it in capital letters in, in a tweet. When you look at this ruling from the Supreme Court, in effect, did the president get exactly what he wanted? That it is a partial Muslim ban uh, and that the Supreme Court is allowing it, that they are deferential to the president and the interest of national security. I don't think the Supreme Court has come out and actually ruled on that issue yet. And, and earlier you mentioned, you know, states and advocates have talked about, you know, his religious animus. Courts have too. The law, you know, some of the lawyer courts recognize the campaign rhetoric and his speech as being evidence of uh, religious animus and showing his intention. The Supreme Court hasn't ruled on that yet. And it'll be interesting to see how they actually use that in uh, a ruling because up until this point, the Supreme Court hasn't ruled on that this type of issue, so it's a novel issue, really. And in terms of its effect, though, Omar, do you think that there is going to be a little bit of panic, perhaps some chaos, from people who maybe even do have a bona fide link, but still cannot get in? And then, of course, there's the issue of refugees. I think the issue of refugees is the one that's really concerning, because refugees and people that are seeking some type of political asylum, these are the people that have the least resources, right? They're not the ones that are having immigration attorneys that can be referred to them. Uh, they're not the ones that know how to navigate this type of system. And I think the ruling that the Supreme Court issued today is the most unclear when it comes to refugees. You know, there's a lot of Iraqi refugees that may have bona fide connections because of the U.S. involvement in Iraq. But from Somalia, from Yemen, from Syria, uh, unlikely that we're going to have large groups of them that are going to be able to claim bona fide connections. Yeah, and what they are going through in those countries is horrendous right now, no doubt about it. Um, it, it Troy, do some pregame for us. If we look to the fall uh, in terms of what the Supreme Court said it may take up and may look at, it, will we get there given the scope of the travel ban that the Trump administration tried to put in, in place anyway? The Supreme Court made it very clear what it wants the parties to brief. Uh, one of the issues is whether the entire case is moot uh, with regard to the 90 and 120 day ban. Mm -hmm. The 90 day ban would have expired uh, on June 14th. And so the court is asking the parties to decide whether or not that's moot at this point, meaning there's nothing to decide. The issue is evaporated because part of the executive order was that this uh, temporary moratorium or ban as it's most widely known was an opportunity for the government to study the issue to see what can we do to improve our vetting measures to uh, 
hopefully not allow persons from those countries who would do us harm to get in because in a lot of those nations they don't have the procedures in place that other developed nations have where we can look into criminal records and where people have been we just don't have that ability there so that's one of the things that the government wants to look to and one of the other issues is whether uh, on the campaign trail mm -hmm. when the president was making those comments about this being a Muslim ban about him wanting to ban Muslims but the executive order is facially neutral, which means that if you read the text on its face, it doesn't discriminate based on religion. It discriminates based on the areas where the people from? are coming yeah. from. Mm -hmm. And so the, the executive order, if you just look at the four corners of the document, it doesn't say anything about um, banning Muslims. Oh, Omar, we've been talking, as Troy just pointed out, this was supposed to be a temporary measure, so in Donald Trump's words, they could figure out what the bleep was going on. We do not, I have, you know, two diplomatic sources, high-ranking from other countries, have told me the State Department doesn't have the staff to figure out what the bleep is going on right now. Omar, do you worry that they, the, the Trump administration will just say to itself, well, we won that case. Why don't we just extend it? It was temporary, 90 and 120 days. Let's just extend it. This could be a travel ban for quite a, uh, a days to come, and let's take it to the Supreme Court. Absolutely. I think that was one of the worries that many advocates had when the first ban came out. Um, it was framed as a temporary ban, but if you look at the four corners, right, it does allow the government to be able to extend the ban upon further review. And I think the other issue that needs to be pointed out is during these stays, the government could have done review. The government doesn't They've need... they had a lot of time. They had a lot of time to do review. <laughs> Without and banning anybody. Exactly. And they didn't do that. So it raises, you know, questions about the intent, about if this was really a measure to increase our national security, why, why, why hasn't right. the government, you know, issued something about the vetting procedures? It's had the time. It just, they haven't done it. Yeah. I'm wondering if we're going to get anybody to put money on the fact of whether t you guys will be back at the end of October to see if we're talking about this again. Thanks so much uh, for all your insights into this. Thanks really for appreciate it.